Jarvis, 2006, you really became a starter as a New England defensive end. Defensive end and defend and, and really the defense really start to pick up because we all remember the 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005 defense. You know with the Teddy Bruskies of the world. It, it started to transition with you and and the other def, the other uh, future defensive players and 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 really it really built through the 2007 undefeated season when you went to and you played the Giants in the Super Bowl. What was it like? Uh, playing in that year in 2007 with Randy Moss and that offense, how how dominant it was, and 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 the players that you got to play with on that fantastic team. You know what? I'm gonna say this, man. You watch Kansas City, you watch these other teams playing, and they put up all the points, and then you show like Kansas City is a great team, but their defense was ranked 25, 27. I'm gonna say all of my years, you could go check the stats. We had tremendous offense. But our defense was just as good or great. When I say that, I'm talking about my years that we was kicking everybody ass. Can I curse? I cursed already. Anyway. That's all right. That's but all right. Yeah. We we was top fifteen and everything, but when it came to points, we was top five. You know, because I know I know we used to talk shit to the offense and say, "Hey man, if y'all just score twenty one points, we're gonna <laughs> win the game. So we gonna keep them under 14. <laughs> That's the kind of defense we had, but the confidence was crazy, and we could be down. Look, oh, guess what? That 07 year, Mm -hmm. we broke a record. I mean, not a record, but we had like six or seven comeback games. Yep, I remember that. So I can remember we we sitting there. I remember Vrabel, Colvin, we talking shit. We down by 14. We like, we look at the scoreboard. Yeah, we're going to win. We're going to win the game, pop champagne, whatever. But we had so much confidence in the team because we knew we had Tom Brady, we had Randy Moss, we had Wes Welker. We was killing people, man. Uh, I'm not bragging. Just It happened already, so I can brag about it. It happened already, right? Yes, it did. But it was just amazing, man. But look, when Randy came in, I remember when he came in the, the training camp, and everybody knew who Randy was. He was a badass. He didn't give a shit. When he pulled his pants down and and mooned everybody, you know, not pulled it down, but he portrayed it and he mooned everybody in Green Bay, whatever he was, Vikings. And when he came in, we was like, I was kind of like starstruck. Randy freaking Moss, the man. Practice, bro. He was making catches I've never seen before. It was like a Randy Moss show at practice. And I, and I saw times Belichick face, he made faces like, Oh my God, <laughs> what did we just create? And you know, and then people are probably pat the door on the back. Great move, GM. Great move. Great move. <laughs> but I mean, we just play, I, I was honored to play around a lot of legends. AFC East in those years where you were playing, you played some really bad teams. I mean, the Buffalo Bills weren't a good team. The Jets, I'm a Jet fan, they weren't a good team. I, and obviously the Miami Dolphins, they were on and off, on and off. They weren't a good team. But weren't they decent when they had Ricky Williams? Yes, they did. They had a couple of years where they stuck out, but nothing nothing that really stood out where they were going to be a competitive. But, yeah. but we go down there and they always beat us, though. Yes, that, and that's that's the thing about the Patriots. They've always had problems against Miami, always, especially going to Miami. So you're absolutely yeah, I just right. just don't get it, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was South Beach, if it was the girls. I have no idea, but <laughs> well, we always had tough times, man. You were there, so was it? I, I was remember, it the girls? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, I plead, I plead the filth. Plead the filth. <laughs> don't tell Bill uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, I think it was just more like you say, it was like their hometown robbery or the next town over, and it always was so much going on. But I can remember, man, playing Ricky Williams. That dude was a bold, a, a, a bulldozer running through there with his head down, didn't say nothing. We sitting there grabbing his dreads, talking shit to him. He walked back to the huddle with his freaking python arms. And, I mean, I remember one game, I think he had like maybe 42 carries, 180 yards. Mm-hmm. We won the game, but, man, when I say we was beat up and sore, but, I mean, the, the AFC East has just always been that type of style of play right. and physical, but I think at the same time, nobody really feared each other because everybody showed up for game day. 
Well, well, it doesn't matter the record. The record didn't matter, right? Yeah, well, you're right. But they, it, everybody feared the AFC. They, the only team that they feared was the Patriots. Nobody feared the Jets. Nobody yeah. feared Miami. And nobody feared oh, Buffalo. True. The culture in Louisiana, definitely one of the most unique ones for football. And, and you playing for LSU. Now we're seeing Joe Burrow go to the Super yep. Bowl. They kind of embrace it as their second team. So what's the culture like in, yeah, that, in that area? Totally. All-American Joe, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> It's, it's different, man. I mean, it's a jungle. Uh, every, every city got its got its ups and downs. New Orleans is not an easy place to grow up in. I mean, we we've been through so much with the hurricanes and and when Mother Nature destroys that place. That place gets hit all the time. And I think the thing about Louisiana is we could talk about all the other forty nine states, but when it comes to adversity, uh, overcoming things, going through the major storms. Uh, it's so much, man. And I mean, like where I grew up at, man, I mean, poverty, almost 39% is wow. poverty and it's bad. And my little town where I, where I grew up, they call my little town a little Haiti, man. Oh, I mean, man. a few years ago, we had seven kids under 17 got that they got shot and died wow. because of heroin Damn. and crack cocaine, you know? So I, I grew up in that shit and it wasn't as bad when I grew up, but I think just a mentality of Louisiana and fighting through things. And you seen the Rocky movie, man. You, mm-hmm. You watch that Rocky movie when everybody said it, that when the girls say you can't win, Rock. That's, that's like Louisiana, man. You can't win. You can't overcome. But somehow we have us as human beings. We learn how to adapt. We learn how to survive, and we learn how we're gonna find ways to eat. We're gonna find ways to, to overcome. You know, and, and I think Louisiana it goes a long way. You know, and we look at Joe Burrow. Mm. The year before Joe Burrow would be a six or seven round free agent. You know, yep. he come out. And I have no idea how he pulled this out of his ass that year at LSU when they were undefeated. I think to this day, it's like fucking Star Wars. You have no idea. You got to go find a little green guy and sit in the goddamn <laughs> swamp and ask why you got the fucking power. Oh, Yoda. I love Yoda. <laughs> Yoda Yoda had to tell your boy Luke on who he was, but he didn't tell him who he was. If y'all remember Star That's Wars. Right. They had their fucking tea, ate their little fucking shit they was eating, but he had to understand that he was the one. He was the Jedi. Joey Boro is the fucking Jedi. <laughs> Bro, I'm just, look. I love you, it. Man. I love it. I Cocktail. Love it. It's all right. I asked Strawberry Henny about an hour and a half ago. Trust me. I understand. I, I need a cocktail yeah. to do this stuff too. I what, you had, what you had? What you had? What you had? A little smoothie or some shit? You talking about? <laughs> What? Strawberry, <laughs> strawberry, strawberry pineapple smoothie. It's uh, no, 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 no. It's not. It's not nearly that girly. We're not going to do this. No, no, Jarvis. No, no. So no, it's uh, all right, all right. it's two shots of Henny mixed with uh, like strawberry lemonade. No slush. What's that called? Uh, strawberry Henny. Beautiful. W- oh, what town are you from? What city are you from? We don't. Long Island, from? We don't New York, Louisiana. Go to oh, Friday. New York. Y'all weird up there, man. Oh, you know, we're in New York. It's all good. <laughs> I mean, you weren't too far away. You're Boston. Boston's yeah, know, got some pretty weird shit, too. I, I know. I know. I know. I'm right down the street. Hey, Ma. I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> hey, Ma, let's go to the park. Like, we, I, I, uh, what? Oh. <laughs> hey, park the car. Let's go to Fenway. <laughs> Jarvis, so obviously when you're in the league, the CTE thing is obviously in the forefront of a lot of people's minds. Is that kind of where the inspiration for Chef to You or Ocean Drive 97 started? Or did you know in your college days that I knew that you had to plan? I always had to plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I did my internships when I played NFL, Rolls Royce, Naval Marine, and I worked for another restaurant company. But I, I, I always been in hospitality, always. I always enjoy serving people. I would enjoy watching people smile after eating my food. And I always treated people and put on different events, even when I was in high school with my twin brother, Jason. High school, even college. We did our cake parties and charged at the door. Yeah, so with LSU, hospitality was always number one for me. I always wanted to take care of people, entertain people, watch people smile. I went to school for construction management, but I never thought in my life that I'd be selling seafood, selling shrimp. Uh, that came from on somebody that favor. But then also the Chef to You platform, it's like a Grubhub Uber Eats, but the biggest thing is that I'm in this and I'm doing this. And yeah, I'm, I want to make money, but at the same time, 
I want to make sure that the hospitality industry get, get their feedback, get their legs, and people could generate money and they could survive and not get raped from all the food app companies out there that, that promising them so many different things and opportunities. And all they do is giving money back to these big old uh, tech companies out of, you know, Silicon Valley. But Chef to You is going to be something different. We're going to make sure and touch the people. We're going to, going to relate to them. We understand them. And, and I always tell some of the chefs, too, about you don't know how it is in the hospitality industry. I say, yes, I do. I own a liquor store for five years and I own a restaurant for four years. And I made money and I lost a ton of money. Mm. And I understand what it is to give to someone to help people and feed people. I totally do. So I want this to really blow up. I want this to be beneficial, not just for me, but for all those chefs, uh, food trucks, restaurants, culinary, pastry chefs. If you make food or you produce food and cook food, we, we want to help you uh, share with more customers out there in the market. Take us behind the scenes of the rivalry with the Jets. That's, the Jets, yeah. I'm going to say this, man. It wasn't even us. Now, if this film, like, leaks and gets ah, somebody. It, it wasn't us, man. It was more like Belichick. <laughs> he hated the Jets. Mm. I think from that one-day contract mm-hmm. or whatever happened with Lou Parcells, Belichick, He's signing. I think New England came up and said the job is, is available. And I think he didn't really want to come to the Jets, man. So it was just a shitty situation. But every time we played the Jets, it was more about him, like, you know, let's let's get these guys back. And he just hit – he had a tight ass that week every time we played the Jets. It was just <laughs> – yeah, man. So we made sure to do everything right. Don't fuck anything up that we don't get fussed at because he's going to make us run twice as much. He's going to fuss at us twice as much. So I think it was, it was, it was more about him. We'd love to get you back on. Your personality hey, hey, is awesome. Hey, hey that, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what she said, but I'm sure Tyler does because he's just as drunk yeah. as you are. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Love mouth! <laughs> Where's the shot glasses at? <laughs> Strawberry Henny. There you Only go. What are you drinking? Like a Boston Only... Tea Party? What are you drinking up there? Only Jersey City. Strawberry Henny. 